Okay, in this video, I'm gonna take you through the AVE deployment steps. Here they are again as a very brief summary of everything that we're gonna go through. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to cisco.com. I'm gonna go into the section for APIC software download version 3.1.1i or later. And you can see here, uh, we've got the, uh, the, the package here for infra, uh, you know, the uh, virtual edge device right here. Uh, we can go ahead and, and download that. I've already done that. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my vCenter web client and I'm going to, to upload this file. So let's do that. So I've logged in here to my, my vSphere uh, web client. I'm running uh, version six here. Uh, you can see I've already pre-deployed the ACI uh, plugin already. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is we're going to use the content libraries that are available uh, in, in six and later. What I've done is I've created a new content library that was really easy, basically create new and give it a name. Um, in that content library, I, I clicked on the, the file upload and I uploaded the file uh, that I just pulled from, from cisco.com. Here, there was no magic. You just go ahead and upload uh, and that, that step is, is entirely done. So uh, for this, you know, first two steps, you can see how quick and easy that is. So the next steps that we need to do are basically go into APIC uh, and prepare our, our APIC environment, create our VMM domains, etc. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so I've logged in here to, to, to my ACI fabric. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to modify an existing VLAN pool from working with AVE. Now the reason I'm modifying is because I already have stuff connected. I've already got ESX hosts connected and I've got other things going on in my lab. Um, if you had nothing going on, you would want to you know, establish that physical connectivity, build your VLAN pools like you would uh, when you connect anything uh, to ACI. So I just wanted to kind of make it clear that I've already got things connected and, and working. So I'm going to modify. So in my particular environment, I've got a, a pool of VLANs called ESX VLANs that I'm using for various things. Um, and you can see that I've got, you know, some dynamic uh, VLAN pools all ready to go. And I was using those for, you know, standard port groups and DVS and if I was using AVS, etc. What I need to do here is I need to uh, create a, a sub pool under my ESX VLANs pool. This is something that was added in 3.1, so it might be new for most of you. So I'm going to go ahead and create a range here. And this is my private VLAN range. So I want to be very clear, this VLAN range never leaves the ESX host. If you remember from the video before, these, you know, these VLANs belong to the inside leg of the AVE and they are only, you know, ESX host local. They'll never, you know, pop up, you know, elsewhere. So uh, it doesn't really matter. There's not a whole lot of thought you have to put into those. I mean, obviously be, be logical, but I really don't care what these numbers are because they're, they're, they're relatively local. Uh, the only difference here that I'm going to mark is, uh, is I'm going to mark them as internal. This means they're going to be internal PVLANs uh, for use with, with AVE in this particular case. So that's all I have to do. Uh, so I, I have submit. We can see they actually show up here as internal as part of my VLAN pool. Um, and we'll go on to the, the next step. So uh, what we have to do next is create a new VMM domain specific for AVE. So this process is exactly like uh, you've done before if you've ever deployed a DVS or an AVS in the past. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is uh, create a new uh, a VMM domain here. So I'll right click, uh, create a domain. Uh, I'm gonna give it a name. So I'll say, uh, follow my naming convention. You can see I have a new choice here, uh, Cisco AVE. So I'm gonna select that. Um, I do prefer local switching, uh, but of course you can have it either. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you can you could back this with VLAN uh, encapsulations or VXLAN. Uh, I strongly prefer VXLAN for reasons already stated, uh, so I'll select that. Um, I've already got an AEP set up for these ESX servers that I've got attached to my fabric, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and reuse that. Um, the only thing I wanna point out here is make sure you have enable infrastructure VLAN attached. Uh, in my particular environment, I'm using Infra VLAN 3456. Uh, your, yours will be different probably, but if you tick that box, then what that is is allowing us to automatically send that VLAN down the links to the ESX host and we can you know, do everything that we kind of need. So uh, the next step is uh, a VLAN pool. Again, you know, I already had that VLAN pool created. I created the sub pool for my, my isolated PVLAN uh, segments behind the AVE. So I'll just go ahead and select that. Um, uh, there's a couple of other things that we need to do. One is an AVE fabric wide uh, multicast address. Um, 
pick an appropriate multicast address, you know, for your environment. Uh, I'm just going to pick something, you know, out of the air. Uh, again, you would you know, be more careful than I uh, in your production environment. Um, so I got that. And then um, there's also a multicast address pool. Now, I've used AVS in my lab in the past, so I had a multicast pool already built. I'm just, just going to reuse it. If you want to see what that looks like, all I did was create a range of multicast addresses, um, and I'm going to go ahead and tie it to this new AVE domain. That, that's it. There's, there's no magic, right? Uh, the last step here is I need to enter my vCenter credentials so that ACI can actually you know, call a vCenter and actually say, hey, do these things for me, like create a DVS. Uh, so we'll go ahead and fill in that information very quickly here. Uh, so I'm building a credential first that I will then tie to the actual vCenter entity that I'm about to build now. Again, standard stuff. This should all be quite familiar to you. Um, so um, call that one AVE. This is the IP address of my particular vCenter. I am using version 6, but we do support 6 and 6.5 here. Uh, my data center, it's the data center that I've created in vCenter. So VMware admins will know exactly what this means. In my particular case, my data center name in vCenter is called AMS6. Uh, yours will be different. Uh, and then finally, the credential that I just built, I'm going to go ahead and tie that together. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Um, there's going to need to be some policies specific to uh, this particular DVS. Um, I don't like the way the wizard shows this, so I'll show you the way I do it. So I'm just going to click Submit. Uh, it builds the it builds the entity over here. You can see on the left, uh, and then I can go into the vSwitch policies and actually actually use pull down menus to choose policies that I ha have already created. So in my case, uh, I'm going to use MacPin. Uh, I'm going to have CDP on, and I'm going to have LLDP off. That's how my environment is set up. Yours might be different, and of course, you will do the the appropriate things. And I'll go ahead and submit those changes. So I'll end this uh, second video here uh, by saying we've, you know, we've completed the building of the VMM domain in, in ACI. We've modified our VLANs. Uh, in the next video, I'll sort of finish it all off by actually going back into the vSphere web client, uh, deploying the AVE, uh, and then coming back to, to APIC and, and going to attach it and uh, attach my VMs, my endpoints, and, and show everything actually working. So go on to the third video uh, for the final conclusion.